Hey everybody, Magpie Gaming here, and in this video I'm going to talk to you about the specialisations which are currently being tested on the Battlefield 1 CTE. Now in this video you're going to hear me talk about the CTE quite a lot. If you don't know what the CTE is, there is a link in the description below to a video which will tell you what the CTE is. But a quick uh, description of it is, it's basically a test environment, it's a community test environment, where new maps and features for Battlefield 1 are tested. And these are done with the aim of ironing out kinks and bugs before these features are then rolled out to the entire game. Now just recently the CTE has been added for console users, so if you are a console user and a premium owner for Battlefield 1, you'll be able to download the CTE and give it a go for yourself. Now these specialisations that I'm going to talk about, these are just available for the PC CTE. For some reason there, there are different release requirements on the console, so... Sony and Microsoft will be holding that process back, so you won't be able to test these specializations right now. This is just for players on the PC. So getting into these specializations, what are they? Well, if you think of the perk system from Call of Duty, everybody knows that, then that's basically what the specializations are for Battlefield 1. They've just decided to call them specializations instead of perks. So the perks system as you understand from call of duty and games like that you get the ability to run faster for a bit longer you get quicker reload and these are more or less what we're kind of getting within battlefield one but they've got their own spin on things so the specializations for battlefield one are broken down into two different variants and these are generic and kit specific so every class within the game will have access to seven generic specializations and then you will have access to two kit specific specializations so I'm going to go through the gener generic ones first and then I'll go through the kit specific ones. So the list of generic specializations are FLAC, which is incoming damage from explosions is reduced by 15%. Cover, incoming suppression is reduced by 25%. Quick regeneration, decreased time before out of combat heal by 20%. Quick unspot, decreased length of time you are spotted by 2 seconds. Bayonet training, bayonet charge lasts 1 second longer and recovers 1 second quicker. Hasty retreat, increase your maximum sprint speed by 10% while you still are sp suppressed. And camouflage, when moving slowly or stationary you are invisible to spot flares. Now when you first start the game you will all automatically have three of these specializations assigned to your character that is flak, cover and quick regeneration. The other four that are the generic ones will be unlocked by completing service assignments. These are to be named and shown off in the future. There's no um, kind of details on what these service assignments will be. But we already get service assignments within the game where if you get a certain amount of kills with this weapon you're given access to this weapon. So you already know how that works. So going into the kit specific specializations for assault we have Juggernaut. Your gas mask also reduces explosive damage by 15% and this specialization does stack so for instance if you're using the flak specialization from the generic list which reduces explosion damage by 15 percent and then you use the juggernaut on your assault class that's giving you a massive 30 percent decrease in damage from explosions which is quite significant to be fair next up for assault we've got controlled demolition tnt is now detonated sequentially not really sure how that works i'm assuming that you're able to drop a certain amount of tnt down and then you're able to detonate in a sequence that you choose that would be how i understand sequentially but i could be wrong there i'm not sure for the medic class we've got stimulant syringe reviving an ally give, will give you both a 20 percent sprint speed for eight seconds this does not stack so of course when you revive somebody you're both able to move out of that area a little bit faster than you generally would be you can see this being a good one especially if you are in a bit of a dodgy situation you all know as a medic you've got to put yourself under the firing line to try and revive have your friends now you're going to be able to get away from that situation quicker once you've revived them next up for the medic class we've got concealed rescue downed squad mates within 20 meters will drop smoke to cover their revival this has a 40 second cooldown so basically once somebody goes down and they're within a certain radius of you they will drop a smoke and this will cover you reviving them not really sure how that one's going to work you know if somebody comes in and wipes three or four players out are they all then going to drop smoke it's going to get a little bit smoky 
certain places. I would assume that this is one that's going to need a fair bit of tweaking and a fair bit of looking at before it works, you know, properly within the game. So for the support class we have Unbreakable, incoming suppression is reduced by 75% when your bipod is deployed, and pin down, the duration an enemy remains spotted is extended via suppression. And for the scout class we've got Scapegoat, a decoy is automatically deployed when struck below 35 health by a distant enemy 30 seconds cooldown have absolutely no idea what that means or what it's on about. I'm going to be interested to see how that one actually works. And Perimeter Alarm. When your trip man is triggered, enemies within 15 meters are marked on the minimap. It's going to be a very useful one for the scout class there. If you're hiding out somewhere and your trip man is triggered, you're going to know exactly where that person is. You're not going to have to remember where you've put your trip man. You'll just be able to spin and shoot. Now, the dev that put this list on Reddit has said that this is just the first selection of specializations. They are planning on more. But I think these specializations that I've listed here are going to be included with In the Name of Desire, which is due out in September at some point. Now, I've actually played on the CTE earlier today, and these specializations are now enabled. The generic ones are, oh well, all of the um, specializations are unlocked on the CTE so that everybody can try them. You're not having to play and unlock them, you can have a go with them. Now, I didn't go into them, I just played with the three generic ones that are applied to your character by default that's flak, cover and regen and I can't really say that it made too much difference to me in the gameplay but as I say I ended up a quick play I was on for maybe 45 minutes the quick regen I didn't really see that healing me any faster than usual I stood still for a moment and waited for the heal to apply and it did and it didn't really seem any faster to me but as you can see from the screenshots on screen now you'll see that when your regen is working or when any of your generic specializations are working they will flash or Orange to let you know that they are working and of course if you want to change your specializations you just simply go into your customization menu and they're down at the bottom and you can choose which ones you want to apply to your character so is this going to change up the game any or change anything with the game make it more popular bring more people to it I really don't know I've got to say that I didn't really notice the difference with those generic ones applied but I suppose it does give you a little bit more control over your character you can tweak your character a little bit more now of course we have had specializations before within Battlefield but they were squad based, this is now just single character based. So I suppose if you have one class that you really like to play, you can now tweak that a little bit more. The devs have gone on to say though that these are just tweaks for, you know, you've got your generic list and then you've got your uh, class specific ones, but none of these change any kind of gunplay. No guns are going to be lowered, they're not going to be nerfed or buffed with this, the gun damage will remain exactly the same. So it really is just a case of what you want to apply to your character. You know, do you want to have a little bit quicker regeneration? Do you want to be less spotted on the map? The camouflage one, when moving slowly or stationary you are invisible to spot flares. Not really sure how you move slowly within Battlefield, but you know, there you go, that's one. How are you going to know whether you've been spotted with your camouflage is working or not i'm not too sure about that one but as they say these are just early days with this they're obviously going to be tweaking these as much as possible through use of the cte but looking at comments on facebook and youtube and reddit of course there seems to be a kind of 50 50 split with this some people saying that these shouldn't be included in the game that it's becoming a little bit too much like call of duty other people are saying that they're a good addition to the game my personal opinion is that they are a good addition to the game like i say if you want to tweak your character a little bit more you can do you can you know now mold your character a little bit better but it'll be interesting to see what other specializations come out within the future i think that's a fairly comprehensive list that we have right now what they would add to that i don't know i mean for new players coming into the battlefield game now with all of these different um options and choices i think it could be a bit overwhelming so personally the specializations that they've listed here would be enough for me I wouldn't really want to add any more to the game. I think that would be sufficient for the game, but obviously we'll see where they go with this in future updates. As I mentioned, this is currently in testing on the CTE, just on the PC. It's not for you console guys at the moment, unfortunately. Hopefully it will be very soon because I would assume that these customizations and the specializations are things that they want to add to the game as a whole and not just the PC version. You know, we don't need that kind of like fragmentation within the community. So hopefully they will come to testing to the consoles very soon and will be included in the name of Desire 
that DLC in September along with us PC players. So there you have it folks, the specialisations that will be coming to Battlefield 1. Now, I want to know what your opinions on these are, so please let me know in the comment section down below. Do you think they're a good addition? Do you think they shouldn't add them at all? Are you looking forward to them? Are you on the fence about it? Let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comment section. As always, thank you very much for watching and listening guys and girls. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I will catch you in the next video. Take care. Thank you.